My name is Nadia Kono. I'm at the Portland State University. Valerie and I are doing a Jishkin language documentation project, Warm Springs. We are going to share a couple of focused areas for this presentation concerning healing trauma-informed approach to the language documentation and devitalization. Uh, with that, let me introduce Barry, my co-presenter. So Barry, you can take it from here. <laughs> Thank you, Naria. And um, first, I'd like to start off with an acknowledgement, not only for these lands that we are on, but also the lands to where we're presenting. And we want to acknowledge the indigenous people in the land where the conference organizer stands. And um, I'd like to um, thank the conference organizers for putting this conference together. Um, I would like to acknowledge the indigenous people to whom um, lands throughout the country where we're, where we're at, each and every one of us. And I'd like to acknowledge the language bearers who continually fight for our languages and our culture and our traditions to stay alive. Warm Springs is a, a in, is an Indian reservation in Central Oregon. Our people, the Warm Springs and the Wasco people were originally on the Columbia River, which separates Washington and Oregon. For many, many years, our people uh, traded, lived and uh, on, the, on that part of the river from um, from middle of the Columbia clear down to the mouth. And, you know, the language that was spoken is, uh, is Kikst um, and Itishkin. Now the Kikst language, um, most of uh, people recognize that coming from the uh, Chinook language families was spoken from that area clear down to the mouth of the Columbia River and up the sides of Oregon and Washington. As, and so, you know, the, the reach was um, far for our people. And if, when you go, when you talk about the Itishkin language, the Itishkin language was um, clear up into Canada and that's how far their reach was. And these two um, tribes, were um, forced to a treaty in 1855 uh, to the middle of Oregon. And this is where the Warm Springs Reservation is today. The Itishkin and Kiks languages uh, are the uh, heritage language spoken by these folks. Now, after the reservation was established, it was about 10 to 12 years later, that the Northern Paiute were um, also included in the uh, Warm Springs Reservation. They were going through, um, coming back from Yakima and going back to um, Southeastern Oregon where uh, their original homelands were. And so, um, this made it very interesting for us because we we have three languages to uh, upkeep. We have three different cultures. Uh, and so, you know, and I know that this isn't um, not uncommon for um, most reservations as some have up to 14 different bands in their um, reservation and, and some even more. But um, this is the story about Warm Springs. This is a multi-year project of the Jishkin language documentation uh, with audio, video recordings, archiving, and creating, expanding an existing dictionary and grammar. This is also a multi-institutional collaboration project among uh, Confederate Tribe of Warm Springs, of course, uh, and PSU, University of Oregon, 
uh, Hank Neustein. So we are going to share two focused areas from this project uh, for this conference presentation concerning healing trauma-informed approach. First, we are going to look at background on trauma and the trauma care approaches. A trauma, you know, many of us that are um, indigenous to this uh, uh, continent or to this uh, United States know of the systematic um, approach to assimilate the Indian, the Amer Native American, um, whatever, whatever it is that you call yourself um, to the um, larger society. And so for years, um, they um, not only uh, took us from our homelands and put us on reservations, they uh, took us to boarding schools uh, from the time that uh, our children were six or seven years old, years old. And, you know, and we're talking now about our ancestors, our grandmothers and our great grandmothers and, um, you know, and how they were taken from this time and breaking up what we knew about um, what it was like to raise a family, what it was like to uh, communicate with each other and thinking that we were less than or not as important as, or um, that who we are was uh, um, a bad thing. And so all of these things uh, resulted in, in um, this intergenerational trauma that we talk about. And it's, you know, as many years as it uh, took to uh, have this um, put upon us, you know, we're hoping that we can uh, restore some of those healing effects that we've discovered uh, while documenting the language on the reservation. These examples are trauma care approaches in the education and health areas. The last one is a workshop presentation by Mays in higher education setting. According to her research, many college students suffer from tra trauma and it is important to recognize our own trauma as teachers in order to understand students' trauma, even before actual learning happens. By doing so, teachers can create a safe environment for students and promote deeper connection and work towards healing. Next, Val is going to share how the Warm Springs language program approached the intergenerational trauma that has existed in the community and how heritage language learning helps community children. It was a time when um, we would be able to make trades and trading was a very big uh, thing for us on the river. And we would, what they, what they call um, potlatches now is what we call giveaways. And we would have, there were all of these ceremonies that, uh, that we had throughout our lives that brought us together and we would sing these songs, we'd do these dances, we'd have these ceremonies so that we would be able to uh, continue that as um, the, of who we are and how we felt inside. Because, you know, uh, receiving an Indian name was a huge deal. All of the family got together and they would um, make uh, items that were valuable to us, like um, beaded necklaces or beaded um, vests or, you know, blankets that were beaded or, you know, several things. And it just showed how much that person was worth, that you thought enough of them, that this is, you know, this is how we're going to honor them. This is how we're going to honor the, the name that was coming out. And, and so 
at different times in our lives, uh, we would be honored for things that um, when we passed at one threshold to another. Mm -hmm. Well, what's been glorious for us is that um, I started in this program when it first began, a year after it first began, and that was back in 1996. And at that time, um, not but two years later, we were in the school teaching and uh, the folks that were um, our students back then are now parents. And, and some of them are, you know, some of the children are old enough to, um, to be in our classrooms and others, um, the ones that we taught when they were in grade school are now uh, stepping up and, and becoming our teachers. And so this has been a wonderful cycle for us. And we definitely, um, can feel this, the strength in their, uh, who they are as a people. They, they um, know their family history, they know songs, they know, and it's not uncommon anymore to, although it's just isolated words like good morning or how are you? And, you know, when it was frowned upon, you know, years ago. And so it's, it's just been a real glorious, uh, turn about how this is, how this has come for us. And, you know, although I'm not going to take credit for um, what's happening at the school completely, but the languages were again introduced into the school and um, the students that we had uh, are now graduating. Well, our graduation record went from, um, I believe it was 19 or 20. And the year before that, we graduated 43 students. And so, you know, it's becoming um, or knowing who you are and uh, validating who you are and knowing that um, you are uh, so worthy, that you're so um, important to us and our future. I believe has really um, given the students a um, a way to feel successful and and continue the work in order to you know uh, become successful uh, citizens in our uh, communities. Thank you so much for sharing, Val. Mm -hmm. And with that, I'm going to introduce two focused areas. Uh, through our project. Um, one focused area is uh, through Master Apprentice Project that many of you might be actually just uh, doing. Uh, based on the previous grants of which is King Master's Apprentice Project funded by ANA, there's uh, se several sections where uh, it's keen elder speakers and a cohort of the language learners uh, developed through ANEA sat down together for recording. In a couple of sessions, elders picked the boarding school experience as a topic and shared their stories in English. And as a practice, advanced apprentices, teachers, learners recited back to each skin as much as they could. Of course, there are various language skin levels, proficiency levels among apprentices. So they can just choose what they said um, from a couple of sentences to several paragraph, uh, as long as the content was consistent. Environment was learner friendly, and I could tell from the recordings they enjoyed so much together during the sessions, giggings, and regardless of the content, serious content, they enjoyed the process of sharing and practice language together. And uh, those sessions were documented and recorded. So that was the one area uh, we thought just 
deep in uh, that their relationship between the community elders and learners and on, also contributed to the language documentation and revitalization. Next area is when we did the Language Warriors Youth Workshop in Ram Springs in July 2019. Thanks to NSF PI Joanna Johnson, uh, we got the extra money uh, through NSF. And so we developed a curriculum associated with the boarding school experiences. Um, at the same month, I just happened to visit the Ram Springs Museum and they interviewed the exactly the same elders. And then they had the exhibit with the interview results and the pictures. Youth participated in the Language Warriors workshop. It's just about just a a um, dozen of uh, youth from fifth grade to high school age. And then they visited the Ram Springs Museum uh, as part of the curriculum. And then they uh, interviewed the elders individually as a group, as a part of audio video recording practice. So that's another practice curriculum we included for this workshop the youth practice audio video recording with the help of Neely Robert. And then uh, they were able to engage with elders on this topic. And at the last day, we did a very simple evaluation what they learned through this workshop. And five uh, participants said uh, they learned about building schools the four people uh, said uh, learned about importance of preserving the heritage languages. And the three learners said learning about new words, languages, and also about the dictionary making. We share those as well as part of the NSF project. And also two participants said they learned about importance of listening to elders and what language mean to me. These are the couple pictures from the workshop. And one picture here is that one of the group, youth group created the stories with some language and they worked with elders and language teachers to get that language down. And then also right hand side, you can see some variation Results. One of the students said, I had no idea what the elder has been through without asking about her boarding school experience during this workshop. This statement demonstrates that she deeply understood the trauma that elder faced and also the importance of listening. This is an example of how a safe environment promotes connection and healing between community elders and the youth. So uh, we just shared just a couple of events what uh, happened during our documentation project. And one of them is just a master apprentice activity and elicitation methods in documentation. And the second one is curriculum development uh, in a community use workshop, you are not be able to just uh, mention individual people's names, especially the elders and participants, but uh, we are hoping uh, this information is helpful for everyone to work on the language documentation and revitalization, especially from inside out and our heartful appreciation goes to community elders, especially. Thank you so much. Wham Springs Ichishkin Documentation Team, Culture and Heritage Department and Language Teachers, ANA Grant, Neely, and of course, not last, National Science Foundation.
I just want to say a few things in my language and, uh, from, and with that we'll conclude. Naika Winamsh, then Kichome in Jukti Kargwa, then Akalpu Naika Anuk in Oba. Naika Damano, Muskanamada, it kick like Kandam Yamde, Kaya, and Shimada Kutma. Just want to thank the Creator for bringing us here today and letting us share our story with you. And thank you to everybody who. Uh, wanted to click on this presentation and learn a little bit more about the documentation project we had here in Warm Springs. Thank you. <laughs>